on this section of the NWV model railroad. I'm going to try to walk around it slowly here. My hands aren't very steady, so it's tough for me to do this. So, oh god, months ago, six months? I don't know. This section here was nicely scenic, but another member and I thought, gee, we could make this a little bit better, bring it up a little bit by adding more trees. I think we've about doubled the number of trees on this section uh, in that time, and George has done a really nice job of putting in some water here. There wasn't any water there before. And I added the covered bridge. There was a highway bridge there before. And uh, I thought since this is set in Vermont, we should have a covered bridge here somewhere in the layout. So that's our covered bridge. So today what I want to do is put a few more scenic details in. Specifically, I think we need more trees. And what else was I going to do? Oh, I was going to do a little bit more work on right in here. I don't know if you can see, come over here. A couple of weeks ago I did some scenery up here around the covered bridge. And I added some, I think that's sand, I think it's actual sand. There might be some, uh, and there's some ground foam mixed in, and a little bit of, of uh, HO scale ballast. Um, but you can see right there, this is what it was like before, and this is after adding a little bit of sand and ground foam. And um, I'm going to continue that around to the rest of it. So that's my intent for today. We'll see how far I get, because I have other things I want to do on the layout. One other thing I want to start with, I think, today is if you notice, these used to be modules that we used to take around to shows. It's now part of our permanent layout. Notice the, well, there's a loose piece of track right there. But anyways, notice the gap right there. I'm going to take and try and close that up with some caulking compound. And uh, hopefully that the caulking compound will expand and contract. We've got some other modules that are expanding and contracting with uh, temperature and moisture. So uh, I'm going to try and see if I can take care of that problem today, as well as so the other things I want to do. So that's where we'll start. And uh, oh, another thing I want to try and do is, yeah, it's been done here. The uh, sides of the rails have been painted here, but not on the other side. And uh, we'll see when we get there. Here's some other module gaps. There's one right here that's been closed up nicely. Seems to be pretty well sealed. And there's one right here. You can see the fresh ground foam on it that was sealed up probably, probably a year ago now. And let's see, where else? Right there, you can see. Oh yeah, all the way back through there. And of course, this this section here hasn't been scenic, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll let another group, there's other guys working on this section. And how's this gap now? And Paul worked on this one again about a year ago. That one right there, you can see the fresh ground foam. Again, this was a module here, and that was a module there. These two went together. And then there's the round module down there. And then behind me, turn around slowly, you can see the line and the fascia. Those were two eight-foot modules right there that we used to take around to train shows. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. Of course, the trees are in the way here. Here we go. 
So I'm going to start out with the caulking compound because I'm going to want to live it, let it dry a little bit. And hopefully it'll have an hour or two to dry and I will have time to... Now what am I going to do here? Hmm. I obviously don't want to put it on the track. And I probably don't want to put it on the ballast either. I'm not going to worry about it way back in the corner there. So I will have to come back later on with some paint and some ground foam and such. I think I'll try and do right here by the ballast. God, I can't get it. Mm -hmm. So that's as much as I'm going to try and do by the track. I don't know what I can do about the gaps under the rail. I don't want to deal with pulling up the rail at this point. All right. I'm going to go over to the other side of this module and close up the gap over oh, there. We've got a gap right down here. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of trees in here, too, to deal with. What I'd like to do is get the compound down into the cracks a bit. Now let's move over to the, putting some material down between the tracks here. One of the advantages of being in a model railroad club is that we have a large supply of materials. We have, here's a, our little uh, kitchen cart here with some of the goodies I'm going to use today. We have, somebody's already done a really nice job of sifting some sand here. So I've got some fine sand. I've got some slightly heavier sand here, larger sand. I have wet water in the spray can and I have matte medium and we have a huge stock of ground foam cover. And I also knows my flashlight here. So I have materials to do the work. Let's see what I can do. I think I'm going to want to go get a, a brush to brush this around a little bit. to have a spoon here in the club that was bent. It was neat. It was a stainless steel spoon and somebody bent it so that you could lay down a thinner line of ballast. Let me get a brush. I'll just use a brush to spread this out a little bit better. This ballast looks to be pretty, pretty new, pretty fresh. 
So I want to have a pretty clear line between the ballast and the sand that I'm putting in. A little bit of light green. And also some burnt grass blended turf here. Fingers are a little bit sticky from the uh, caulking compound. I should wash my hands. Okay. Some wet water. I love how it blows all the all the ground foam that I just carefully put into place. Blows it all over the place. There's that section. Now I'm going to turn and do this section here, and I'll bring you back when it's done. You can see, there we go, two sides of the grade crossing. The difference. Okay, I just added a little bit of Elmer's glue right there under the tracks. We'll see if it. Uh, Give it a little bit of time, see if it sinks down too much to do any good. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. So here's the track, scenic, all the way around. Now I'm going to go around to where that other joint is right there. See if I can get some Elmer's glue down in there. Of course, there's a tie right there. I'm going to have some tractor clean up here, aren't I? Being a club layout, you have to keep it clean, keep the rails clean, because somebody might want to come down here tomorrow and run trains. So, in the back of my mind, I'm watching the clock. I've Still got a couple more hours, so I'm going to have to allow myself time to 
clean up the track. And obviously, I'm gonna wait time to clean this. Um, yeah. So obviously, I'm, I'm gonna have to have, allow time for this to dry too. But, hmm. I think we can hurry that up with a hairdryer. So at this point, I've let it dry with the hair dryer for a few minutes. It's been 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, this has settled down pretty well. I'll show you in a second the other side. I think this is ready to be scenic over the white line. I'll do that next. As you can see here, it's settling down. It's really sinking down in between the cracks there. All right, I'm going to try not to pay any attention to the noise next door. I hope it's not coming over the camera. A little bit of green on the... Oh my. See, I'm using medium buff ballast with the scenics, and I'm trying not to get too much. Just want to get enough to cover up the holes here. And I'm going to put a little bit more of the sand. Between the rails, between the tracks. The thing I find tough sometimes is not to get too much between the rails. cart that we have. Keeping the scenery material handy. And now a little bit of green. green ground foam in there. Come on. That medium. I'm not sure how this is going to come out because I'm still seeing some um, 
Elmer's glue sticking, you know, some white from the Elmer's glue showing through. If I could get just a little bit. Just the tiniest bit of ballast to stick right there. Boom. And way too much. It'll clear off with the. I'll have to come back through with a bright boy afterwards. step. I'm just going to use a paintbrush, the same one I was using to paint the, the green with, and put some Elmer's glue in place. And I just have a little condiment cup here of Elmer's glue. Nice thing is that this Elmer's glue is really old and it's uh, thick. That's going to be great. You can see it's kind of stringy and sticky. Just what you want. Oh, good. I'm into some white paint up top there. I'm going to have some green glue now. Real sticky green paint. This is what I wanted. It is a Scenic Express. It's a 64 ounce bottle. Flock and turf. I love this stuff because it's got, they put pieces of sticks and things like that in there, twigs, pieces of grass, along with the ground foam. Yeah, that's it. That's the stuff I want. Smells real funky too. Wait a minute, what? What kind of sticks they putting in there? Let's see if what happens when I spray this. Stay. Alright. Cool. Getting a little bit wet like that helps hold it down. I'm noticing in the camera that you can still see the line of glue, so that tells me I need more. I have a real steep right there. I'm going to stick. And a little bit more right up here. And a little bit more right down the bottom of the camera. All right, spray and glue. Again, this is just wet water. I'm not sure if that wet water has alcohol in it or soap, but we have both around here. And now come back with Matte medium, yeah. Woodland Scenics matte medium. Come back later. 
Now let's come over to the other side. Right. And once again, I'm just painting on some wood glue. Okay, well I need to clean up now. This is how it looks at this point. It's not completely dry. But uh, I say I've got to clean this up. There's a little bit of junk on top of the rail there. And I'll take it over to the other side. There's the main line. And uh, this is the stuff that I did here. And that's the stuff that I did before, it's right about there. If you can see the difference, it's probably still wet, a little bit darker than it should be, or it will be when it dries. And then over to the other side, yeah, you can see where the gap is because of the ties, but that's not looking too bad. I also painted that mountain, looks terrible, but it matches up better in the corner. So there's where we are. Again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, uh, please leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any questions or comments or some suggestions for things I could have done differently, better, whatever, please leave them down below. And happy model railroading.